God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. So tonight we're going to preach and pray. We're going to be preaching and praying tonight. And what I want to be talking to us about is, is dream killers and vision dreamers. Vision demons. Dream killers and vision demons. There are, there are things and those who want to kill our dreams. Uh, there are those who cannot kill our dreams, but they deem our vision. Glory be to God. Uh, you, you know about these lights, if we, if we were to deem it, what's going to happen is that you gradually no longer can see until it is completely out and then you're in darkness. And those who deem your vision, they want to gradually take away what the Lord has painted in your spirit. And somehow, some way, you find yourself walking away from the things that God truly has given to you, from the words, the prophecies, the words of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the revelations that God gave you, what you knew that God said to you, gradually you start to walk away from them. And believe it or not, folks, there are folks who can see beyond your natural eyes can see. And if you remember Christ, Christ, your Jesus, my Jesus, when he was born, what happened? The Bible said there were some majors in the east that saw his star. They saw his star, and they followed his star to Bethlehem. And so, and so, there are still folk just like that who are somewhere seated today, and some of them are walking under the powers of the devil that can see your star. And those magi, because they were good, they followed the star to be a blessing to Jesus. And you may find some bad mangers who will want to kill and destroy your star. And that's where we need a part of God now. And I remember I told us a story some time ago about this lady who tried to discipline a child in class. And what happened is that this little child in her class said to her, he said, if not because of the Lord that's on your side, this pregnancy that you have, I would have destroyed it. And she didn't even know that she was pregnant. That teacher didn't even know that she was pregnant because she has not tested it. It was still in the very early stages. But you have this little child who saw what man's eye could not see. That's, that's how dangerous the world is. And we're not for God who was on the side of that woman. This little kid through the powers of hell could have extinguished that baby in that woman's womb and she would not even know it that her seed was gone. That's why we need to be protected under the blood. That's why wherever we go, whoever we associate with, doesn't matter. We need to be protected by the power of the blood of Jesus. It's only the blood of Jesus that can overcome the powers of hell. That's why the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. That's what the Bible says. The devil can't stand the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary Tree over 2,000 years ago. He cannot stand it. That power is still there today, tomorrow, and, and years to come. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so I want to read from the Bible before we pray tonight. And the scripture says in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. It said, Therefore night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision. That ye shall, in other words, day will become night. Day will become night. 
So day can become night for somebody. And we, we don't want to be there where our days become night. And we perpetually dwell in darkness. When day become night, that means we perpetually dwell in 24 hours of darkness. And that's not where we want to be. He said, it shall be dark unto you, and ye shall not have divine. Ye shall not divine. You will not be able to see things. And the enemy can blur the vision of a man or woman. The enemy can blur the vision of a Christian if you allow it. That's what I was saying this morning. That when they caught Samson, the first thing they did was pluck out his vision. Took out his eyes. A great man of God. Great man of God whom God had anointed. He descended to a point where he had to work in the mills. That's not where he belonged. That's not, the mill was not his, his, the plan of God for his life. No, that's not where God wanted him to be. But he got there because the enemy attacked him. And the first line of attack was to take away his vision. And so those word of God is saying night can become day. And then you have two nights. You can't afford to dwell in two nights. When night becomes day, then we can no longer be able to reach the power of God and pull down, draw down the power of the Holy Spirit. It said the sun shall go down over the prophet, and the day shall be dark unto them. The sun shall go down over the prophet, and the day shall become dark unto them. This is a moment in time that God described here, where there will not be prophecy no more, where there will not be vision no more. Little by little, the vision had become dimmed because somebody had a hand on the dial and begins to dial it down. And gradually you find out that the light is gone and now day becomes night. <clears throat> Glory to God. And I, I can be a factor to deeming my vision or killing my dream. Like I said before, the devil by himself does not have the power over my life. He has no power over my life. If God does not allow him, like Job, if I don't allow him, he has no power over my life. If you're sitting there today, you're afraid of the devil, you're making a huge mistake because the devil has no power over you. God had not given him power over Christians. He lost the authority over you and me. Because Jesus came and put his foot upon the head of the devil and crushed that. And said, all powers in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He said, go in my name. He said, in that name you will tread upon snakes and scorpions. You will tread upon Adam. He said, you would even eat deadly things. He said, it will no harm. It will no wise harm you. Somebody try to poison you, forget it, it's not going to work. Because Jesus has taken the power of the poison from that thing. Glory be to God. So it's me who can stop the power of God working in my life. And so tonight, we're going to pray and we're going to ask God, the Lord, if I have ever contributed to your power, damning your power, stopping the flow of your power, Lord, I pray that you would just help me to overcome that. And now look at what the Bible says. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13. It said, brethren, it said, I count not myself to have apprehended. This is what Paul said. Paul zeroes in on himself. Not on anybody, but himself. Not on God, not on the devil, but himself. He said, brethren, he said, I have counted, I have not counted myself to have apprehended. He said, but this one thing I do. He said, I forget the things, those things which are behind. Those things that try to dim my vision and kill my dream, he said, I forget them. My past can become a problem to my future. And that's why I've said it many times, if I don't deal with my past, he's going to deal with me in my future. 
So my past, my past experience can become a problem to my future experience if I don't deal with it. And there are some past that you need to forget. And that's what I was saying this morning. There are certain experiences that can never, it's indelible in your spirit. Some of them you need, some of them you don't. And so Paul said, the ones I don't need, I choose to forget them. I don't take them with me to my next stop. I leave them behind where they belong. He said, and I'm reaching forth unto the things which are before. He said, those things I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So he speaks of himself. Fear can be a hindrance to achieving the purpose of God for my life. My past experiences can be a hindrance for achieving the purpose of God for my life. Feeling insecure and instability in my life, lack of faith in God, doubting God's promises and doubting God's word, all of these things going on in my mind can become a hindrance to the power of God, the flow of God in my life. So I can become my worst enemy. I can become my worst enemy. But I can overcome that through the knowledge of the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As I hear the word of God, it builds a faith in me and demolishes the power and the stronghold of fear. And little by little, I find myself entangling myself and just getting myself on a tank, removing everything that the devil had wrapped me with and lose myself and come out of it victorious and glorious. So tonight, our first prayer is to pray, Lord, if there be anything that I've done or I'm doing that is not allowing the flow of the power of God in my life, God, open my eyes to see. I don't want to keep going through the same circle over and over again and over and over again. And God is saying, break forth and go not what? And I'm still going through that circle over and over again. I don't want to be there. I want to achieve the plan and the purpose of God for my life. Glory to God. So take a moment and just pray that prayer right now. Just begin to pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for myself now. I say, God, if there be anything that I am doing that kills my dream or dim my vision, Father, I ask you today in the name of Jesus that you by yourself will help me to overcome this thing. Give me knowledge in Jesus' name. I pray for every single one here today and everyone that is listening right now over the internet. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever is in your mind, put in your mind bondage, I break you loose from it right now in the name of Jesus. Every and anything that's holding us down, that is not allowing us to move forward in the name of Jesus, I command it to be broken from all off of us. Every chain in our hand, chain in our legs, whatever it is, bondages. Oh God, every burden on our shoulder. The Bible say the anointing will destroy the yoke. The anointing will move the burden. I pray that a special anointing will come upon me right now, come upon everyone here, and come upon those who are watching outside of here. In the name of Jesus, let a special unction come upon you right now. In Jesus' name, receive your deliverance. Be delivered from the powers of hell. Be delivered from the powers of the enemy. Be set free and made free in the name of Jesus. Everything that try to hold you bound, I command it to lose you now in the name of Jesus. Every past experience that refused to get out of your life, I command it to be broken off of your mind in the name of Jesus. I command your mind to be free. I command your heart to be loose in the name of Jesus. Receive freedom right now. Receive liberty in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. I say the eyes of your understanding shall open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the eye of your understanding shall open right now. In the name of Jesus. I command everything that is blocking your vision to be removed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive a clear vision. In the name of Jesus, receive a clear vision, like the vision of an eagle, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you the glory now. We give you the praise right now. 
And I pray for each and every one of us, oh God. Help us from this, time, from this moment forward. That God, we will not have to be our worst enemy. We'll be our best friends in the name of Jesus. We'll be able to partner with the Holy Spirit and stay with God in the mighty name of Jesus. We will hear from God. We will see what God wants us to see in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you right now because every hold over our mind, every hold over our body, it has been broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we give you that glory right now. We give you that praise right now. Lord, no imagination of the devil will ever come into our mind. It's going to be only the imagination of God for our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, every image of ourself that you have not created, Lord, we command it to be consumed by the power of the Lord God Almighty in the name of Jesus. Lord, every imagination that the enemy has cooked up, Father, we pray today that the power of God shall consume it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Only the image of God, only what God has imagined. You said your thought for us, your thought towards us, they are good and not of evil to give us an expected end or a good future or a guaranteed future. Lord, we pray only the thoughts of God will succeed in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, whatever the devil has planned for us, Father, we command it to collapse and never rise again. In the name of Jesus. By the power of God, we cast down every evil imagination. By the power of God, we cast down every evil imagination. We remove it from our memories. We remove it from our mind. We remove it from our spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. No other spirit but the spirit of God will be able to speak to our ears. No other spirit but the spirit of God will be able to use our vision. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God. We give you glory right now. For what eyes have not seen. What ears have not heard. What has not entered into the heart of man. That is what you prepared for us. And Lord, we receive it by faith. We receive it by faith. Everything that belongs to you, I call it to come to you by faith. In the name of Jesus. Everything that belongs to me, I call it forth to come to us by faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. Every eye that is not of God, that is observing our lives or monitoring our lives, we command blindness to come to them now. In the name of Jesus. We command them to be blind. In the name of Jesus. They shall see us no more. And we shall see them no more. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father we thank you now. Everyone that has been harassed in the dream. It's time you sleep. You just have nightmares over and over again. I command deliverance to come upon you right now. Ye shall see them no more forever. In the mighty name of Jesus. You'll begin to see the visions of heaven. From this day onward. Only the visions of heaven. In the name of Jesus. You see the visions of God. In the name of Jesus. Only the visions of God. Will come into your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father we thank you now. We thank you now. All of those powers that can see beyond what we can see. That can see the bowels of our lives. That can see the depths of our lives. And want to do us evil and do us harm. Lord, we command the fire of God to find them wherever they are right now. That every arrow that is shot at us shall backfire and return to the sender in the name of Jesus. Every evil incantation or evil divination that have been sent our way, we command them to go back to the sender in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you the glory. Come and take a minute and just bless the Lord. Just bless the Lord. Just bless him. Just bless him. Your day shall not become night in that name of Jesus. I prophesy to you. I speak to you that your day shall not become night in that name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The sun will not go down over you. In the name of Jesus. 
that they shall not be dark over you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. God bless you. Hallelujah. I encourage you to continue to press forward and don't allow your past experiences and the past things that you have seen or experienced in your life stop you from pressing to the mark or for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And another, another thing that I see in the scripture is that our, our parents, being who they are, can, can interfere with our destinies and our dreams and our vision. Not because they mean to do that, but sometimes it's, it's, it's like a knowledge of what God has planned for individuals. And so we find out that there are certain individuals that are living a life that God has not designed for them. And unfortunately, by, because of circumstances that we find ourselves as a family unit, we make decisions that may affect the life of our children. And some of these can be corrected in prayer through God and allowing God's plan, total plan, to be fulfilled in, in our lives. And, and some of us have, and, and I have seen a situation where a decision is made in a family unit and say, well, the first son or the first daughter is going to stay at home and, do, and take care of domestic work while the second and the third go to college. And so we swap them. No equal opportunity for those children. And, and therefore, some of them grow up to be great in society. Others are limited because they didn't have the tools that they needed to succeed. Why? Because the economic situation or the socioeconomic status of the family unit demanded that a decision be made that is tilted against one person. Tilted against one person. And it could be you or me today who have to have experienced that. But like I said, God can correct those things. There's nothing God can do. God, God can breach time. God can fast forward somebody. Everything that I lost, God can bring it together. He said all these things work together for the good. He said regardless of the plan of man, God was not absent there. Folk can gather together and make a decision on my behalf, but I tell you, God is not far away. God is going to make sure, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, God is going to make sure that that decision that was made work together eventually for my good. It may take a year, it may take 10 years, but eventually it's going to work together for my good. Glory be to God. Now let's read a couple of scriptures in, in, in the book of Judges, chapter 14. That's a remarkable story here. Some of you have read it before. That's a remarkable story here. And, and sometimes you read this story, just wonder, what's God trying to do here? God always has a plan, good or bad. God is there, has a plan, especially if you're a child of God. Don't let nothing bother you. If you, if you try to get something and you couldn't get it, don't let it bother you. Believe God. Maybe that's not what God wanted you to get at that moment in time. God is going to make you work together for your God. If somebody took something from you, believe God that God is going to replace it and bring it back to you in a hundredfold. And that's where God is really good because he's going to make sure that that person looks back and they said, I feel bad that I ever touched that child of God. Yeah, this is a remarkable story before we, we pray on this. He said, then his father and his mother sent unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of my brethren? This is Samson. Samson comes to the, the parents and says, Well, I want to marry a daughter of the Philistines. Huh? Why would you ever say that? And now, let, let's go ahead and read it. He said, Is there not uh, never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? Or among all my people, that thou shouldest take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistine? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. For his father and his mother knew not that it was the will of God that he sought an occasion against the Philistine. For at that time, the Philistine had dominion over Israel. 
Now look at that. He came to, to parent. God had a plan. Seems like this man had an idea of the plan of God. And, and said to the parent, help me walk out the plan of God. And they said, no, 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 you cannot do that. You cannot do that. But the Bible says that both his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. They didn't know. Now, think about it. If they knew that it was the will of God, it was of the Lord, they would not have questioned it. But the reason they questioned it, say, well, you can't go that way. You need to come this way. You can't go over there. You need to go. And so we become God and, and control the lives of others. And they would have redirected this man away from the very plan of God. And therefore, the Philistine would continue to have dominion over Israel. God wants to break the dominion. And he wanted to use Samson. And he wanted Samson to penetrate the very frontier of the Philistine. And he arranged all of this. But the parent didn't know that it was of the Lord. And now think about it. Some of us might have found ourselves in this situation. And again, we cannot make a judgment out of this and say, well, everything that I say I want to do is, is, is always the will of God. And my parent cannot interfere with what I want to do. No, there are godly parents who truly know what the will of God is. And they will guide their children by the will of God. But here, the parent didn't know. They did not know that it was of the Lord. In other words, they didn't pray about it. They didn't seek the face of God. When their boy came to them and said, this is what I wanted to do. And they tried to dissuade him. Glory to God. And, and we, we, we read the same thing today. And Joseph, Genesis 37, verse 10, he said, and he told the dream, the second dream he had. He told the dream to his father and to his brethren. And now look at what happened. His father did what? Rebuked him. He said, stop those dreams that you're dreaming. Now, you, need to, you need to stop those dreams that you are dreaming, Joseph. So he, he essentially tried to dissuade him from his dream. Try to talk him out of it. Have you ever had some great idea, some great vision, and you come to a pastor and you try to talk about this great idea and this vision that you have? And because your pastor doesn't know about the will of God for your life, try to talk you out of it? Have you ever come to your parent and you have this great vision, God is saying something, and you try to talk to them about it, they try to talk you out of it? You ever come to your friends, to your teachers, your mentors, and they try to talk you out of it? The only reason that they would do that is because they had no idea that it is of the Lord. And sometimes we walk away from our dreams and the pursuit of it because somebody talked you out of it. Now you have become a carbon copy of yourself. No longer the original you that God had created you to be. There's a race that's set before each and every one of us that we almost run our race. You cannot run your race if you don't know that you have a race that's set before you. You can't run it. So the, he said, the Bible said that his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamt? What is this? What is this? He said, put, put it aside. But thank God the boy would have. He would not let it go. Because he was fully persuaded. That is of the Lord. So when you are fully persuaded of a thing, no one can kill it and no one can deem it. When I'm fully persuaded of a thing, that means the entire part of my life lines up with that will of God. My body, my soul, and my spirit. Ain't nothing like where the body, the spirit is willing or the body is weak. No! The spirit is willing, the body is willing, the soul is ready to go. Because it is a plan of God. Everything lines up together. That's where God wants you to be. So tonight you're going to pray too. You're going to pray. 
every decision that was made on your behalf, whether by spiritual parents or, or physical parents, uh, whatever decision, bedroom, whatever it is, and they try to extinguish your dream or dim your vision, you're going to tell God reverse them in the name of Jesus. You're going to tell God return again my captivity in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, by your hands begin to pray. By your head, begin to pray. Every decision that was taken against you, every decision that was made that tilted the scale against you, God, we have to turn it in your favor. Let the scale be tilted in your favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, open your mouth and pray for yourself today. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are right now, but God knows. I don't know why you are where you are now, but God knows. Maybe somebody said you couldn't have it, therefore they placed a block on you, a stumbling block on your way. Oh, glory to God. You have Jesus that has the ability to break through blocks and bricks in the name of Jesus and use them, oh, glory to God, for your glory and for your purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray right now. I pray for myself. Any decision made on my behalf by whosoever, that have filtered the scale against me and stacked the odds against me. Today I pray that you will reverse it in the name of Jesus. Tilt it in my favor. Oh God, move it in my favor. Turn the dial in my favor in the name of Jesus. Oh God, illuminate my vision again. Hallelujah to God. Let me begin to see again in the name of Jesus. Don't let the darkness overshadow me. Oh God, let your glory come upon me. I pray for myself and I pray for someone here today. I pray for you now in the name of Jesus. That whoever has exchanged your destiny, whoever has exchanged your dream, I pray God it shall be returned to you in the name of Jesus. Every aspect of life, when they have exchanged you, I say it shall be returned to you. All your captivity shall come back to you in the name of Jesus. God will restore again. Your captivity, in the mighty name of Jesus, every will of the Father for your life, it shall come to pass, it shall come to fruition, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Somebody pray for one more minute, one more minute of that prayer. Tell God today, every decision that was made, that changed your destiny, that changed your destination, oh my God. When you were supposed to be going left, you went right. Oh, Lord Jesus. Because somebody said, go right. Hallelujah. Let God bring you back to where you're supposed to be. In the name of Jesus. Let the supernatural power of God move you from where you are to where you're supposed to be. In the name of Jesus. Let the supernatural power of God move you from where you're seated to where you're supposed to be seated. In the name of Jesus. Oh, let the supernatural power of God move you from the place where you leave to the place where you're supposed to leave. In the name of Jesus. Let the glory and the power of God move you to where God wants you to be. In the name of Jesus. To the level that God wants you to be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let Jehovah fight for you. Let the hand of God move on your behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. No one has power over you. No one has power over your future. Every decision that was made against your future. Today I declare it shall be reversed. 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 In the name of Jesus. Father we give you glory right now. Lord we give you praise right now. Lord, we exhort your name right now. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, precious God. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy that endures forever. Oh, God, we're so grateful. We're so grateful. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Please be seated for a moment. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We are just about done. And now, beside you or me or those who are dear to us who make decisions on our behalf, try because for obvious reasons they don't know that it's will of God. 
community of people around you can derail you. Commit you and me to derailment. And, and again, that's why you, you got to know the people that surround you. They got to be spiritual people. They got to be folks who understand the will of God. You just can't let any help person speak into your life. You need to know that this person knows what he's talking about. Because he knows the will of God. He hears from God. He's a man as a woman of God. And the Bible says, be not on equal yoke with unbelievers. That's what the Bible says, because the unbelievers will give you unbelievers' viewpoint of life. But you are not a natural person alone. You are a natural person having supernatural body, supernatural power. God is with you. God is on your side. The divine lives in you. Glory to God. So you need to be connected with folks who are on the same journey with you. I said this before. If you're going to New York, you can't get on a bus that's going to Boston. Because the folk going to Boston are not going to the same destination like you. You're going to end up in the wrong place. So I'll find me folks who are going to New York. Those are the people I'm going to hang out with. And so you see a story here about Jesus in John chapter 6 verse 42. Jesus had a mission on earth and, and, and <laughs> bless the Lord. The Bible says even, even his brothers, his brethren, brothers and sisters didn't believe it. Folks who, who were born in the same house with him didn't believe that he was the Christ. But there were many who believed him. In the course of time as he ministered to the people, and a statement is made here, a statement to disdain his deity and to deem his vision and wanted to extinguish his dream and his purpose on earth. But because he is Jesus, he didn't really care for them. And look at what they said. They said about him, they, they said they, they meaning now the collective the pronoun, the group of people, the community. They said, is this not Jesus? Is this not Jesus? The son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know, how is it then that he said, I come down from heaven? How did he come about this dream? How did he come about this vision? Is this not the guy that was born before our eyes and grew up before our eyes and we know his father? His father is a carpenter. You know, they, they, in other translation of this verse, they actually said his father is a carpenter. And they said that to... to demean who he was. He said that to demean who he was. His father is a carpenter. We know his brethren. We know his sisters. How can he be, how can he say that he has a vision? He has a dream. And now, if you, if you were in that situation, if I was in that situation, chances are that we begin to think twice about the revelation and the vision that we got. You start to doubt yourself. Why? Because somebody told you, you're not supposed to dream like that. That what you just said does not belong to people like you. You're not qualified to carry that type of anointing. Who are you? Where are you coming from? Glory to God. So that's what they were saying to Jesus. But again, because Jesus knew his mission, he wouldn't let what they say challenge his vision for his mission. And so he continued. And so that's why you're going to pray today. You're going to pray. Everything that folks spoke to you that has made you to doubt yourself, tell God to take it from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell God, whatever they spoke into my life, whether it be my parent, you know sometimes our parent tells, well, you're, not going to be, you're never going to be able to make it in life. You're never going to be able to succeed in life. And therefore, because of what your parents said, you are finding yourself to be doubting yourself. And there are friends that say the same thing. Your friends will tell you. They say, well, nobody ever achieved this in life. You have this a great idea. They say, forget it, it never happens. You can never. You don't have this, you don't have that, you don't have that, you don't have that. And then you resign and say, well, I'm going to deem 
my dream. And then day becomes night. Why? Because you deemed it. You turned the dial based on what somebody said. So the words of somebody now affect you. And like we said this morning, whose report are we going to believe? Whose report? We choose to believe the report of the Lord. So if the Lord said so, that's what it is. Glory to God. And that's why you're going to pray. Pray very quickly. We're almost done tonight. Pray very quickly and tell the Lord, if there be any word that was spoken over my life, into my life, that God has deemed my vision, that God for one reason or the other, in the name of Jesus, that have deemed my vision, I, by myself, by my own doing, by my own choice, have put my hand on the dial, and I dialed my vision down, and I dialed my dream down, because of what somebody said, tell the Lord, erase it from my mind and my memory. Lord, I want to be able to reach out to the dial again, and dial it back up, and get my vision back, and get my passion back, and pursue my mission. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I pray for us today. I pray for us as a people. I pray for everyone here and everyone that stood here today. I ask, oh God, in any area of our life that somebody says something. Oh God, that made us put our head on the dial and deem our vision and dial our dreams back. Oh God, I pray that you by yourself will erase those things from our memories and God give us the grace and the power and the boldness to get right back on it and dial ourselves right back to the place where God wants us to be. To you be the glory God. Great things you've done for us. Lord we cannot doubt you. We refuse to doubt your power. Thank you God. Thank you God. We destroy every dream killer. And we bind in the name of Jesus every vision demon. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our dreams shall not die. Our vision shall not be quenched. It shall not be dimmed in the name of Jesus. We pray the same for ourselves. And the same for our children. And the same for our children's children. We declare today God. Whatever the plan of God is for our life. It shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus. It shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. By the power of God, we speak it today in the name of the Lord Jesus. We say, it shall come to pass. Father, we give you the glory. Take a moment and just bless the Lord and just give him praise for tonight. Just give him praise for tonight. Take one minute, just bless the Lord for tonight and exhort him and magnify him. Tell Lord, I thank you. I thank you because every dream killer in my life is no longer there. Everyone that tried to dim my vision is no longer there. I'm shining brighter and brighter. My perfect day is just around the corner. In the name of Jesus Christ. My vision is clear. I see the visions of heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I take back everything that was stolen from me. Lord, I thank you because you restored again my captivity. I'm back on the highway. Lord, I took the exit, but I'm back on the highway. I'm pursuing my vision. I'm running my race in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because all these things, all of my failure, all of my fear, all of my struggle, all of my pain, they all work together for my good. And Lord, I give you praise for it. I give you glory for it. I give you praise for it because I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And Lord, I announce today that I am back in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Lord, we leave this place today. We're not leaving your presence. We want your presence to come with us. Wherever we go, in the course of this week, Lord, we're blessed today. We're blessed this week in Jesus' name. We ask your God favor shall speak on our behalf. Everything that we need shall be given to us. In the name of Jesus. Whatever we ask for shall not be denied. Lead us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. All that our steps, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. We magnify you. We exhort you. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6000.
888-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nation.